Hi guys, welcome to the next video of the SOAP tutorial series. In the last video, we talked about the SOAP messages in detail. In this video, we are going to talk about the SOAP fault. Now, actually, SOAP faults are also kind of SOAP messages, but since it is little different in its purpose, I thought of discussing it in a separate video. Now, one thing I want to discuss or clarify before moving forward that in the last video I told that the SOAP messages are mostly auto-generated for the RPC style SOAP where one program can call a method of the remote class. Now there are applications which are not RPC based like if you take XSLT. In these applications these SOAP messages are not auto-generated. We need to create those SOAP messages by ourselves and then hit the SOAP URL corresponding to a remote class and pass those SOAP messages as HTTP request to those URLs. Okay, now let's talk about the SOAP fault. Now, SOAP fault is a special type of message which is actually used for communicating information about the errors that may have occurred during the processing of a SOAP message. I have one sample SOAP fault message here. Let's look at that and try to understand its structure. Now the only requirement for the SOAP fault is that it should be the child element of the SOAP body element and it can appear only once in a SOAP message. Now let's see its child elements or sub elements. Now it contains a fault code element you can see here. Now this element is used to identify the type of error that has occurred. A SOAP defines four standard types of fault codes that belong to the SOAP envelope namespace and they are version mismatch, must understand, client and server. The version mismatch fault code is returned if there is a mismatch between the namespace declared in the SOAP envelope and the SOAP elements used in the SOAP envelope. So suppose if we have declared the namespace for SOAP 1.1 but we are using the elements from the SOAP 1.2 version then this version mismatch fault code will be returned from the server. Now there is something called must understand fault code like this. Now must understand fault code is returned when the service is not able to understand a specific SOAP header block and that header block has contained a must understand attribute as true. Now we saw we already saw this must understand attribute in our previous video. Now when this fault code is returned this it should also return the information about which header block is not understood. Now the SOAP fault structure does not allow to express information about which headers were not understood. To solve this problem the SOAP specification 1.2 defined a misunderstood header block that can be added to the SOAP fault message to indicate which header blocks in the received message were not understood by the service like this. So it tells us that this transaction header element or header block is not understood by the service. Now there is one more fault code called server. Now the fault code server signifies that some error has occurred in the server side maybe during the processing of the message but there is no problem actually with the SOAP request. And finally there is one more fault code called client and that signifies that there is a problem in the SOAP request message so it may be the message is containing invalid credentials or there is some improper encoding style attached with the element so if you see the SOAP spec specification it, they have provided only four standard fault codes but there are two ways by which we can extend these fault codes to allow for more expressive and granular types of faults one by using the dot operator where the left side will be the standard fault code and right side will be the more specific fault code. So suppose if in the server side we have a fault like resource not available. Now since this should be in the server fault code category so the fault code which we can send it should be something like this server dot resource and in the description we will tell that the resource is not available. Okay, the second approach is to use a different namespace for the fault code and provide the fault code from that namespace something like this. Okay, and now here in the fault code we can use this namespace to give our custom fault code something like this okay now there is something called fault string element here now this contains the description of the error 
and we can have a fault actor node or element and it provides the information about the unique identifier of the message processing node at which the error has occurred so this is like it contains information about which endpoint caused the error a node that does not act as the ultimate destination should actually include the fault actor element inside its fault message to show that the error has occurred in this node now there is one more element called details here and it is used to provide application specific details about the error that has occurred so here we can provide the file name and line number like those information we can provide so these were the details of the soap fault message this is it for this video we will see some more stuff of the soap web service in the next video thanks for watching